Taylor Walker from the Abbey Crows, and you're listening to the Coaches Panel. Shannon Hearn from the West Coast Eagles. This is Nathan Jones from the Melbourne Football Club. Phil Davis from the GOS Giants. That's Brad Avery from the Port Adelaide Football Club, and you're listening to the Coaches Panel. Hello, it's MJ from the Coaches Panel. I hope you're enjoying your day. Maybe you're just starting it for a trek into work. Maybe you're just relaxing on holidays. However it is you're choosing to listen to this podcast, thanks so much for being a part of the journey of the 50 Most Relevant. Every single day, articles and podcasts coming. As we chat here at the Coaches Panel about, or at least I think, the 50 most relevant players in the 2019 fantasy footy season, mostly from a salary cap perspective. In fact, entirely from a salary cap perspective. Uh, to talk about the number 47 player, uh, and I'll be honest, wasn't sure he was going to make it. Not the person joining me, the player that's made it in, the 50 I'm talking about. i got Jimmy on the line. Hello, mate. How are you? Hello, MJ. Feels like I've never left. How are we going? Uh, no, you probably haven't. That's for sure. Uh, here's the thing. Let, let's talk about Nick Newman. He lands at number 47. Um, and we are going to talk about why he is relevant, because he is relevant. And I want to get your take. I'm keen to hear some thoughts from people at the coaches panel uh, via Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Would love all that. Here's the thing. I wasn't going to include him in my 50 most relevant. One thing happened in the preseason, a horrible thing happened in the preseason, and that's how he's got his way into the 50 most relevant. Now, I know he can score. You look back at some of his 2018 numbers and 2017, you know, his best score in fantasy and dream team last year was 119 against the D's that same game. He's 110 in super coach. The fact that his defensive eligibility means he actually can make the list. He would never make it otherwise. Mid-70s average across the formats. Priced nicely, I'll be honest. Priced nicely in super coach under 400,000. Just a touch over in dream team. Uh, and in AFL fantasy, it's an interesting, awkward price. So I want to talk about that a, a little bit later on too. Um, in terms of if you're picking him, what your expectation should be at, you know, just over $550,000. Um, the reason Nick is in the 50 most relevant is because he can score. Make no mistake about it. When Nick Newman had the right role at Sydney, he could score quite nicely. He was one of the best cash cows for fantasy coaches just a couple of years back. Um, in 2017, the year he made his debut, he averaged 86 in AFL Fantasy and Dream Team from 18 matches. Seven times he went better than his average, and five of those were hundreds, including, I don't know if you got to be a part of this game, Jimmy, whether you had him on the field. He was a, you know, listed as an emergency. Some coaches just happened to leave him on the ground by mistake. And then all of a sudden, he's a late in and he knocks out a career best 135. Were you a part of the blessing of that? Did you trade him out at that point? How did you go with Nick oh, Newman? No, no. I, I, I had him on field and everything. Um, I actually heard of someone who had him um, on field as captain. What? A loophole, I think, that week. And oh. ended up with that doubled instead. Oh, that that I, I, that might just be a a, a rumor, but uh, I'm sure someone said something. And they cheer that bastard. That is one of the greatest. That is huge. <laughs> that is one of the greatest fantasy flukes I, I've ever heard. Yeah, for super coaches in 2017, he averaged a little bit less, 82, uh, eight scores over that average. Three of those were tons, including that game against North, a huge one five one. Last year, though, Jimmy. Wasn't a great year for Nick, both in terms of games played and a fantasy footy output, just the 10 games. And he seemed to get juggled around a little bit in role, didn't he? No longer that halfback player that we saw at Sydney the year prior. He was played sometimes forward, sometimes up the wing, and kind of, as we've seen sometimes with John Longmire, guys with a fantasy game getting moved around a little bit, but not really in the role that fantasy coaches would like. No, that's it. He uh, certainly did get horsed around a bit there, for oh, uh, pardon the pun. <laughs> that's from Tish. But uh, no, look, he's, um, as you said, he's, he, and you summed it up well there, he can score. That's the thing that we know with him. Um, he's not Tom Mitchell, and I think that's the first thing we need to make very clear here. He's not going to be the guy who was scoring 150 in the knee for, uh when he was there and then suddenly goes to another club and scores 150 there playing the real thing. It's not... No, uh, Nick Newman is not Tom Mitchell. I think um, if, that's the if call of the on that basis. Mate. That's it. That is the um, the one thing we need to bear in mind here. But he does have in the right role a fantasy friendly game. I um, I don't think he's got a particularly super coach friendly game, and his averages have always been a little under in that format. And um, I, I tend to think that'll continue. Is to 
I mean, the way I look at it is for him to increase his scoring from what he did last year, he needs to settle into a better role mm-hmm. than he had. He needs to find more of the ball than he did. Um, and in Supercoach, he needs to use it better. And that's not just relying on him kicking it straight. That's relying on his teammates getting to the other end of it. And uh, Carlton players are not Hawthorne players. So that um, all of those three things, I think, make him um, fairly irrelevant from a Supercoach point of view. Okay. In fantasy, his price makes him a little irrelevant. Uh, but in Dream Team, if all we want him to do is pick up 30 touches swinging across half-back where Sam Doherty used to be, I'm I'm interested. Yeah, I think you touched on on a couple of points there that I'm keen to get your thoughts on. Um, the reason he, he's moved to Carlton, there are a number of reasons. Um, mm. One is the re-signing of Jared McVeigh. That certainly was an impact. And, and then the trade-ins of Thurlow and Clark, both, you know, halfback yep. style of players. All of a sudden, it wasn't just, okay, if McVeigh's out, I'm in, or if Mills is out, I'm in. There's yep. now two other guys fighting for that spot, and they're different players to him with different mm-hmm. sets of strengths, and he has his own as well. But for yep. him, he's like, nah, I think the best chance at advancing my career is somewhere else. And mm-hmm. with a player like that that's fringe, that goes from one club to another, um, generally speaking, again, without knowing and being in the rooms with conversations, generally speaking, clubs would say, mate, there's a role for you. It's yours to lose, as it is yep. to... Oh, come and join our, our, you know, our, our squad of twenty fifth player to thirtieth player, and if one or two injuries happen, you're in. Now that has happened for Carlton this preseason, unfortunately, but generally that's the case. It's mate, there's a role for you, but it's yours to lose, not yours to kind of win. Exactly. Um, if that makes sense. And, you know, sadly, there is that big, horrible news with Sam Doherty out of the side. Now, the thing is, they choose, chose to use Daisy Thomas off halfback a lot more last year. They may choose to do that. Um, we did a video at the Coaches Panel YouTube channel. You can go and check that out uh, a couple of weeks uh, ago now, looking at a couple of options. Tom Williamson could be one of those guys that sneaks in there. So w- while I'm not sold that it's Doherty out, Newman in, it certainly bodes better for his job security, whether it be off the wing, whether it be off halfback, however they choose to use it. I think Newman's got a spot on the side, at least for the first couple of weeks, and whether or not he delivers on the role the side require of him, and if that has a fantasy impact, I, I don't know. Here's the thing for me, though, Jimmy, and this is why I, I wanted you on the episode, because um, I, I think you're you're a little different to me on this. While I think he's lucky to get into the 50 and he does present value, I'm not sure he's as good as some of the other stepping stones we have. Because at his price in Supercoach and Dream Team, while he has the potential to push the top 10 averages, he's got the potential. Potential's a dangerous word. Um, in, In fantasy, it's different. I think if you're picking him and there's a different set of structures and strategies of how you play. But if you're picking him, it's probably because you think he's going to get you up to somewhere rather than be someone you keep. Now, we've all been pleasantly surprised, Clayton Oliver, two years ago, but these are just some of the stepping stones in the back line. Brody Smith, Zach Williams, Pierce Hanley, Grant Birchall, Wayne Miller, Callum Mills, Jasper Pittard, Andrew McGrath, Cade Collar-Jasney, Ryan Burton. Uh, these are all like 10, 15 names that all are in a, you know, different formats, different pricing, but all in that range of guys you're expecting a 10 to 20 to 30 point increase. I feel more confident with some of those names than I do Nick Newman. That's fair. Um, and, and conversely, I feel a lot more confident with Nick Newman than I do with some of those names as well. Um, and I think the thing with, with Newman, is, as we said before too, is that with him, it is really about finding the, the right role and the right form. Um, yeah. With a lot of the guys you've mentioned just before, it's also about finding a good rhythm with their body and staying yeah. in the park. Yeah, it's so different, that's isn't risk. it? That's it. It's a risk that we don't have with Newman. Uh, and I think the other potential advantage he's got compared to a lot of those names uh, is that he's got that that ceiling he and does. that potential to consistently get high scores and a lot of them in a row. Um, and, and I don't know, uh, and I'm certainly not going to back him to be a top six defender at this point, uh, but I think he's definitely got to be in that conversation with those other stepping stone names that you mentioned uh, and to write him off this early in the preseason would be uh, a little foolhardy I think I think it is dangerous um, you know we've mm. talked about Harley Bennell and he, he gracefully decided to get booted out of a, a pub the night that 
you know, we launched him as the 50 most relevant, you know, uh, <laughs> Billy Longer, you know, these are not names that you traditionally think are among the most relevant players, but that's the most dangerous things we can do sometimes in the preseason is hear a name, see a couple of stats and averages, have some confirmation bias somewhere else and go, that's it. They're not relevant. No, no, no. The most dangerous thing a fantasy coach can do in January um, outside of locking their team away and never looking at it again, um, is closing their mind to the possibilities. Is because when you close mind, you lose so many possibilities of options and variations of what could take place. And so you're right. I don't think you can fully just go, nah, that's it, Nick Newman, you're out. Because he can score. He really can score. And there are coaches yeah. that are listening going, I, I kind of agree with Jimmy. I think there's potential. I think he's one of the better stepping stones who could even turn into someone I hold for the year if I get lucky. And there are others here and going, I trust 10 to 15 others. Um, and they have different risks and concerns. And that's okay. Because there is huge potential with Nick Newman. Make no mistake about it. And I can see the potential and I understand why someone feels bullish on him. Um, but for me to personally go there... I'd need to see some roles in the JLT. I'd need to see the scoring. I, I want to see how the Carlton um, kind of structure up and what their game style is to feel really confident um, in going after him. Because um, I think there are other avenues to goal in the back line. But I get why coaches would be looking at him. I, I, I get it. I'm not yeah, doing absolutely. it, but I'm not getting it. <laughs> and look, and... and- in January, um, and, and especially this early in January, um, I think those question marks alone make him very relevant. Yeah. And he is being talked about. That he is a player that's uh, polarising for a lot of people. There seems to be a lot that are either dead on picking him or dead against it yeah. for, for one reason or another. Um, so he is very relevant. He's a great point of discussion, and I'm, I'm very interested to see what his ownership is going to look like coming into round one. Yeah, me too. Speaking of ownership and, and what it kind of looks like, where he goes in a draft is fascinating and, and almost impossible to predict. Uh, I guarantee there's going to be someone that is uh, either wanting a bit of a blues-flavoured backline touch to their, you know, to their defensive five or a really overzealous fantasy coach that's going, like, nah, man, he's 90 plus and, and jumps probably way too early than they should. For me, I, I don't see him as one of those top 20 to 25 defenders in my initial rankings right now. Now, they always change, you know, from here on in. So I wouldn't be drafting him inside where you'd be looking to, you know, kind of pick a top three defender. Um, yep. But I can see why a coach might jump a round or two early for him. I can see why a coach would go way early on him. Um, I won't, but um, I think it will be a common thing in a lot of single-season drafts um, where there will be coaches that end up with Newman as their, their first defender. Yeah. Um, and I think there'll be others that will try and pick a, um, a Laird or a Lloyd flavour in the first round and then jump on Newman in the fourth or fifth. Yeah, and I think that's the thing. It's all about where you pick at someone like him, isn't it? It's mm. If you go, oh, I picked Nick Newman, everyone's like, oh, yeah, you picked Nick Newman. But if all of a sudden you've picked him up towards the latter teen part um, of the rounds, well, happy days. That, there's no mm. problem with picking Nick Newman. Now, if you're going round eight or nine going, geez, I need a really good D2 option, well, then you're a Muppet. Um, but that's okay. <laughs> um, I, I, I get that. Um, no, I wouldn't uh, do it. I I really do think, yeah, there'll be a, a, a little run on defenders and you'll see those top names go and people will be looking for a, a, a defender who might come into that top bracket. He's not, he's not listed there by average, but he might come into it. Uh, and I go, you know what, I will take a punt on him because if I don't, then I'm going to be stuck with, um, you know. Grant Birchall. So, exactly, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I can see him going early, um, not just from a Carlton fan, but... Uh, Someone who does, uh, for whatever reason, think he might be the next uh, Tom Mitchell and um, or just be desperate <laughs> for a, someone who might be a quality defender. Um, I think he'll go in the first 10 rounds of most drafts. All right. Interesting to see. Uh, it's early January. It's early days. Do you ad- or agree or disagree? Well, you can have your say uh, over at the Coaches Panel Facebook, Twitter page. We'd love to hear your thoughts about that. And, uh, Jimmy, appreciate getting a, a little bit of a different perspective to mine on, on Nick Newman. I see it, and I appreciate it. Thanks, man. 
No, anytime, man. Happy to chat. Uh, if you want to check out the rest of the articles, uh, they are online now for you at coachespanel.tv. Someone that's been a massive supporter and is a Patreon member of the Coaches Panel is Craig Keel. Thank you so much for your support. If you want to join the Patreon, uh, you want to stream the podcast, you want to read the articles, all the info is at coachespanel.tv. Not far away from entering into the mid-40s of the 50 most relevant. And I'll be honest, the guy that's coming up tomorrow, as I was writing the article just the other day, I talked myself into picking him. And I wasn't previously going to do it. You'll find out who he is tomorrow.